Joe from Deakin University Broadcast Studios. John star Alan Christensen joins us tonight as we take a look at all the news and team changes for round eight. And, we'll, and we also have a very special live performance in the studio. Gilly, a big welcome to you, Gilbert McAdam. Now, great, great, to, great to be here and I'm pretty happy after Monday night. You would. The Saints yeah. won. What a good victory it was for, for St Kilda Monday night football. I reckon well done to the AFL because I, I don't mind Monday night football. It's more about the, uh, the uh, viewers, I think, more so than people actually going to the game. Now, mm. Kelly, tell us about Geelong. How <laughs> brilliant were they against the Well, Essendon? well... On top of the ladder, well, undefeated. Well, you know, like last week, Ronnie putting up stuff about me and that. I thought this week I'm not going to put stuff up. I'm just going to say what I said at the start of the year. I tipped Geelong to win the flag. <laughs> OK, Kelly, let's introduce the All-Star Mongrel panel, Rock and Ronnie Bird, three-time premiership star Chris Johnson and three legend Wayne Carey. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Duck, I'll go straight to you. What's happening with the Magpies? They seem to have lost their way from last year. Is it because, is it because they've changed their game plan? A new coach? Uh, their midfield is not operating as effectively as it has in the past? What's going on? Oh, I think it's a little bit to do with personnel. They've had some injuries and uh, over the years they've been able to cover those injuries. But I think this year with the likes of Ball and a few others that are out, um, they are struggling. And I don't know whether you know this, Jono, but they've actually lost... Uh, well, won less quarters than the Gold Coast Suns. So the Gold really? Coast Suns have won more quarters than Collingwood. And I tip, and I tip Collingwood to win the Premiership this year. Can you believe it? it? it is it because their defence isn't as good? Well, you know, just explain to our it's listeners. Team, well, it, it's team defence, Gillian. I think, yeah. and, and every side now, it's not just, not just defence. I just think as a team, yeah. they're not playing like they were a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, the one thing that you admired about Collingwood, they never missed a tackle. There was no. a shepherd to be made, they made the shepherd. They were just relentless in the way they attacked the man with the ball and when they didn't have the ball, the pressure that they put on, they're not as good now at that. Well, the reliance is on too few now, isn't it? That's it's right. On, it's on the uh, Thomases, which is not going to be there anymore. Yep. It's on Swan, those sorts of guys. Those, that, those guys in the back six, mm -hmm. as you mentioned too, Gilbert, that's, uh, that are falling away they, as well. Gilly, what if they play on Monday? You reckon they'll win? Oh, I don't think it really matters, <laughs> Ronnie. Okay. Well, I was just matter. mucking around. Are the pies, Chris, getting undisciplined? We see a lot of frustration creeping with the Collingwood. He sure gave away a couple of silly free kicks. They probably wouldn't have done that under Mick Malthouse. Yeah, look, that tends to happen. When you've been at the top of the uh, tree for quite a while and, and things haven't been going your way, you can get frustrated and do certain things. And uh, certainly Mick would have, uh, as, as we know what Mick's done over this week with Carlton, we know Mick runs a pretty tight ship and uh, if you step out of line, he pulls you back in and... Uh, uh, not too sure whether Bucks would probably have the same philosophy, but whether the guys are, are a bit more uh, disrespectful towards Bucks than what they were towards Malthouse. All right, Chris, well, let's talk about Fremantle because they've been sensational the last few weeks. They've had a lot of injuries. The coach, Ross Lyon, is coaching them very similar to how, St. how he coached at St Kilda. Now, we've seen St Kilda get to a couple of grand finals, but they couldn't take that last step. We see the same similar game style at Fremantle. Do you think it's effective enough to get them to that big day in September? Look, I think it's effective enough to get them there, um, without a doubt. But whether it's going to win on grand final day, uh, as you'd know, Duck, it's high-pressured football. And, uh, you know, you can't just close games down grand final day. Because if you try to do that, the team that you're playing against is there for a reason because they're one of the other best teams in the comp and they can use the ball pretty well. I think they're fairly adaptable, though. They're, they've shown that they can be quite attacking as well and kick goals very quickly. So I think that's the difference between how Ross is coaching now compared to what he did at St Kilda. It, but it comes, but also, back, it comes back to the personnel too. Right. The personnel, like he's got Walters at the moment playing that nippy forward yeah. pocket. He had Milne in the past. You know, Walters probably a little bit more fresh than what Milne's going to... A lot still, still ways on uh, Pavlich, how he goes, um, how far Fremantle goes. I know that we, put, we talk about Pav a lot, but... He's the barometer of that club if they're going to make it all the way. Yeah, there were four if he blokes. can keep playing in the forward 50, without a doubt. There was mm. four blokes missing from that side. Fife, the one he just said, Hill, Sanderlands. Mm. That's scary. You put them four into the side, mm. all of a sudden, look out fine. Ronnie, awesome. let's quickly talk about the small forwards because they're really dominating the competition at the moment. We've got Lindsay Thomas out in front, goal kicking, but the next four places, all small running midfielder types, forward pockets, half forward flankers. Are we seeing a trend in the modern game? Oh, for sure. It's unbelievable now. It's usually lovely to play back, well, play now and the small forwards because they're right up there. Lindsay Thomas and these small guys, I mean, they're, I mean that's because of the game. It's changed. Uh, you never had your back 10 years ago. Um, you know, you used to go through your centre-half forwards and your 
and your full forwards and the, the little seagulls that they were called back then, they were just scouting, but now they just go to anyone. Yeah, you just hit the nail on the head then, Ronnie. Before, they, they relied on crumbs, and that's all they got. Mm. In actual fact, it was a bit of a graveyard, for, and it, it was, was very tough to play a lot of games in those positions. Now they're targets. They're, they're actually targets. They lead, they, get, they take marks, and they do just about everything. And I think it's, it comes back to how quick the ball moves from defence to forward. Yep. All right, Gilly, it's time for <laughs> Gilly, it's time for your grill. What do you got for us this week? No, well, look, look, we always talk about Carlton and Collingwood and those type of people. Well, you know what? I'm not going to talk about them. I'm going to talk about the Gold Coast Suns. Yeah. All right? Yeah. What? No, no, no. no. Look, I, I call that game against Melbourne on the weekend. And I'll tell you what, what? that was the Gold Coast Suns' first win in Melbourne. Yep. First win at the MCG. And I just want to mention some players who weren't actually playing in that game. People like Bock, he's almost missed two years of football the way he's going. Hunt, he was missing. Yeah. Rizzicelli was missing. Charlie Dixon was missing. Liam Patrick was missing. Now, I'm going to mention some names that were so positive in the game. O'Meara, he was unbelievable, that player, kid. He, he played terrific. Zach Smith, Bernal, Day, Lynch, Shaw and Hall, right? Along with that, you bring in the leadership. you got... Swallow, you got Campbell Brown, you got a bloke called Ablett. They had a player on the sub in Brendan Matera. That's unbelievable for him to be a sub. You know what? I reckon the Gold Coast Suns, they've won three games so far. They're one game out of the eight. I'm not going to say they make the eight, but I want to I ask the panel, Ronnie, you included, I want to use to tell us what's the, what's the success for the Gold Coast Suns for 2013, how many games do you need to win, because they predicted that they're going to win a grand final, fellas. Tell me, come on. I, I, I think <laughs> it's only an hour. The way, that, the way they're going, I think they'll beat um, uh, the Bulldogs on the weekend, and I think the way they're going, they'll win six or seven games this year. What I've seen on the week, what I've seen on the weekend from the uh, Suns, where they're bigger and they're stronger from against a team that's been around for a long time and that only been around a short time. So they are going up, Gilbert. All right, we just might leave it there for a second, Gilly. It's time <laughs> to go to the <laughs> AFL News with Layla Gurawiwi. <laughs> Actual mania may have hit North Melbourne this week, but West Coast coach John Worsfold said that, it, said that in Perth tomorrow night, the Eagles would not be paying the big forward any special attention. Just normal, normal preparation in terms of, um, you know, Drew Petrie, Mad Jack Door up there. The rest, you go through their whole list. We, we weigh up matchups and what each player brings. Um, so the uh, the excitement about Mad Jack at the moment is wonderful for the game, but. He's just another one of the 22 that will run out for the Kangaroos against us. Whether due to a lack of experience or leadership on the park, the Pies haven't been playing as well as expected. Coach Nathan Buckley this week called for a greater effort from his selected 22. We fundamentally believe that you need to have pressure at the source. You need to have pressure on the ball, whether it's Geelong or whether it's Fremantle or whether it's Sydney. I mean, you need to be able to put pressure on the ball. You need to win contested ball. and. We'll pick a side that's capable of doing that and, and that'll be our focus. Bulldogs coach Brendan McCartney indicated that Nick Lowell would, would most probably play on Gary Ablett this weekend, adding that stopping great players is always a team effort. Yeah, you'll have a match-up and most likely it'll be Gary. Uh, difficult little man to stop for any club and any team and uh, that's the challenge for us. But most people who get run with roles do their best work when their teammates help them too. And if the team isn't defending well and all functioning together, the opposition's best players always get out. So it's a team focus. Now to the ladder, the Pies-Cats game on the weekend is likely to see Geelong further secure its place in top spot and the Pies drop out of the eight, I'm afraid. In the bottom half, Carlton's loss has seen them storm on 11th spot while the Demons and the Bulldogs are stuck in the doldrums near the bottom. Now guys, when they came down from Darwin earlier this year, Charles and Marissa were snapped at the footy with their son Noah, attending his first ever AFL game, and lucky for him the Hawks had a win. Carolyn sent in this shot of her daughter Sarah and grandson Jack at Cadinia Park, and nice hat there Jack. And all the way from Wickham in WA, this is Lawson Amiza with Swans champ Lewis Jetta. Don't forget, if you'd like to send in a snap of the week, go to the Margaret website and follow the links. All the panel's tips are also on the site, but as a sneak preview, I think the Cats will get the pies, and tomorrow night in Perth, the Roos will jump the Eagles. And I'll see you next week for our great Indigenous match. Thank you, Layla Guru Wee Wee. Well, Gilly, let's go to our first game, a big one. West Coast Eagles taking on North Melbourne. Friday night at Sydney Echo. And let's have a look at the East for West Coast, Gilly.
Charlie. Yeah, good to see Kerr back in there. Selwood Waters and Master now the side. Brown's uh, been our middle with, along with Bell Zeal. He, was, he won the game for him last week against the uh, Lions. Anyway, Smith and Hutchins out for the North Melbourne. Grimer's back in, but unfortunately, Sirikowski's out. Yes, well, we should say uh, Margaret's very own Nathan Grimer. He's been on enough times and he yeah. played some good footy when he uh, came on the show. He's but, Dark, I'll go straight to you because there's a really anticipated mm. clash between Mad Jack Daw and Nick Natanui, and people have been waiting for this to happen for a couple of years now. But it's going to be an exciting contest. It's all right for the West Coast Eagles coach John Worsfold to play things down, but this is one of the all time exciting clashes. Yeah, I think Mad Jack will probably play predominantly forward, so that you won't see them come together too much. They'll have a little bit of a battle at times in the ruck if Mad Jack gets moved into that area. But, uh, look, they're, they're very exciting uh, players. Uh, Nick Nat's been around for a bit longer, knows the game a little bit better. Uh, Mad Jack's still learning the game, so it's probably unfair to say that uh, it'll be a huge battle. Um, Mad Jack, as I said, only in his fifth game. Do you reckon they've got a match-up for Mad Jack? Because his, his jumping ability is actually sensational, his vertical jump. I can't see West Coast having a match-up for him. Well, well, Glass has been around for a while. Glass has been around for a while. He's taken all types. Are you serious? Or? I'm asking a serious question. Well, he's only well, played, yeah, Glass is going to go with him. He's hardly played AFL football. He, he's not an impact. He's not an X factor yet. Give him time. Oh, okay. Just give him a bit of time. No, no, really, really, like, 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 glass, glass, will, glass will take him though, Ronnie. Glass will take him. Oh, you well, would that's think. a matchup. But I think yeah. uh, Magic Door is just going to run him around. Is he? I, I just find the physique on him too. I mean, you look like that once, didn't you, Gilly? Let's get some tips, shall we? <laughs> uh, look, as we know, last year in the finals, West Coast gave the Kangaroos a, a good old-fashioned flogging. I don't think they'll do that this time, but I still think they'll win. West Coast. Uh, okay. West Coast, I like the, the, uh, the work between Darling and Kennedy up forward. I think that's going to be too much for North. Ronnie? Yay. I reckon uh, North Melbourne will get them. And Yay. Lindsay Thomas on fire. Yay. And no one will shut him down, Magic Door. <laughs> Nobody. Yep. No, no. Are you all right tonight? Or <laughs> Gilly, I'm going to go for West Coast oh, yeah? at home. No, no, look, I'll tell you, a lot of people forget. Remember, West Coast smashed them last year in that finals? Yeah, that's what he just said. Yeah, that's yeah what I, I know, but <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just yeah. making a point. That's why I think North Melbourne have got a bit of a chance. Oh, oh, hang they on. might win, but you know what? Eagles. <laughs> OK, let's go to our next game. Carlton taking on Port <laughs> Sunday at the Docklands, Port Adelaide. To Carlton. Yeah, good to see Wade Rowe, Joseph Menzel. Great to see Menzel. He's going to be a star like his brother. Bell boots him out of the side. Eddie Betts with that silly suspension. Eddie, I don't know why you did that. Ellard, Yaron's out with a uh, hammy. They're going to miss him. But for Port Adelaide, good to see Cassisi, the former captain. Logan, the boy from Alice Springs. He's in there along with Loby and Stewart. And Hitchcock out, Stewart <coughs> and Heath. Mm. Well, it should be a very good game, Ronnie. The Blues, they're reeling at the moment. There's lots of injuries at the club, mm. suspensions. Yarram's done the hamstring. Cruz is playing with a broken thumb. They're in all sorts of trouble. It's a real danger game for the club, isn't it? Well, they need to win this one. And, uh, yeah, uh, Monday night, they went down with some injuries. Yarram, those guys that you mentioned, good to see Wade back in the side. And uh, uh, he got a silly suspension last week, but he's back in the side. He's got to cut that out of his game. Betsy, that one there you mentioned, Gilly, that's uh, cost him. But they need to win some games. Carlton. All right, Duck, let's get a selection on this game. Uh, look, I think Port Adelaide were not great last week, but I think they'll uh, they'll get up and win this one. Yeah, with a short turnaround, I'll have to go with Port Adelaide. Uh, very important game for Carlton. I reckon they'll win. I think if the Port Adelaide midfield can get on top like they did for the first three or four weeks and give Schultz and Westhoff a bit of uh, possessions, they'll win. Port Adelaide. Yeah, no, look... It'll be a great game. Both sides are coming off a loss. That's why it's going to be a very close game. I reckon Carlton just... <laughs> OK, well, let's go to a break. We'll be back soon with our special guest, John Star, Alan Christensen, for St Group. And one of their stars joins us tonight. Please welcome Alan Christensen. <laughs> Al, it's always a pleasure to have you on Mangrook. Congratulations on your win on the weekend because Geelong remain undefeated at the top of the ladder. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it was a 
a good win on the weekend and uh, it's been a great start to the year. So, yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Al, because your form's been absolutely sensational. You've been playing really, really well. What, what do you put that down to compared to other years? You've come out of the block straight away from game one. You've played really well consistently. Yeah, it's um, probably my pre-season. Um, got a good pre-season in and, um, yeah, it just builds the base and uh, been very lucky to push more into the midfield and, um, you know, help out blokes like J uh, J James Kelly and Joel Selwood. So, yeah, it's been good. Oh, look, Alan, look, thanks for coming on the show. It's always good to see you on our show. One thing I've noticed, Geelong, they've got the best experience and youth combination in, in the AFL. And it, it, there's no coincidence that when your young kids get a game, there's a standard that they have to play to and meet the, the, the experience cause. Is that fair to say? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess we've got a great academy system down at Geelong and um, they get taught the same way in the VFL as we play in the AFL. So as soon as you see a bloke like George Hall and Smith come into the team and he steps up straight away, it's um, a credit to our academy coaches who are doing a great job. Well, when you won that many games, you wouldn't fear anyone. But coming up against Collingwood, what are your main focuses? Is it still Pendlebury, Swan and those guys? Or do you really focus around Travis Cloak? Because let's be honest, if Travis Cloak is quiet, Heath Shaw's out, so he gives them a lot of run. O'Brien, what's been the focus this week? Uh, yeah, definitely their midfield. Their midfield's still one of the most powerful in the AFL. So um, Swan, Pendlebury, Beams, Luke Ball's coming back in, yep. I think. Yeah, so, um, yeah, they're still a great midfield. And... Um, I think stopping Travis Cloak will be a big one for us because um, I think he's the most inside 50 target in the league by a long way, or for them by a long way. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be really important for us. And Bundy, just want to talk about your skipper, mate. It hasn't been great for him, a great start to the year. He sort of hasn't been up to the standard that he's normally up to. How's he been working through that? You can see him doing the one percenters. And what sort of leader is he? Oh, he's amazing. And um, I guess with Salzy, he's sort of the in-between age. He um, can really uh, interact with the older guys, but the, the same as the, us younger blokes. So, um, I don't know about you, I'd love to be in his sort of form at the moment. So. Yeah, I'm saying, he's been watching. Compared to his standards, like, he, he well, dominated all year but last year. But that's the problem. The Duck won, couldn't play won, like that every week. He won the game, won the game against Sydney. Yeah, he yeah. was yeah. sensational in the third quarter. Yeah, I think he can play better, Duck. Oh. Well, that's oh. that's oh. funny. Oh. That's scary. That's your coaching talk. coming out of here. You, got, uh, we got this, you talk about the three amigos down at Carl, and, and uh, you got Stokes here yourself and Mott, Motty, and obviously Varco's out. The, I mean, is there a bit of competition with the, the three, the Indigenous boys there? I mean, Mott, Motty rates himself as a good looking fellow. You, you, you brush up pretty well. I mean, I held that mantle for eight years down there. Um, oh. there, what he's got jealous. <laughs> is there a bit of, a, a bit of competition amongst you, the boys? There, there is something uh, wrong with you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen to him. Just nah. focus here. Look here. Yeah, <laughs> nah, we, we, we try to look like you, and we're looking at your hair, and it looks good you tonight. And uh, no, nah, I don't know. We love playing with each other, and it's oh. always oh. good playing with, <laughs> yeah, with no, the bad boys. Uh, Not uh, like uh, that. Ask uh, <laughs> Alan, but Alan, look, look, who, who's? I, I know you're going to say Geelong, but that's a good question. Who's better? Do you, you, do you say that you're better than them, than the Carlton boys, or what? Oh, I'm not because getting, I know we'll into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll ask you a sensible question. Matty Stokes, he's been <laughs> sensational, and he was brilliant again on the other night, playing more of a midfield role this year. We've seen him in the past uh, in the forward pocket, but this year he's in the middle of the ground, and he's been sensational all year. Yeah, he's been absolutely amazing for us, and um, I guess he's just another player that can go into the midfield and have an impact, and uh, it's only going to make us better as a team, so he's uh, been very, very good at the moment. And the other older guys that have been around for a while, such as Jabbar Tells, are playing a real key role now in different positions what they're used to? Yeah, um, you see Jimmy going back a bit, playing more of a sweeper role, uh, Joel Corey going back, and um, probably Chappie playing a bit more forward this year. So uh, it's up to us younger blokes to, to really lift our standards and take their spots where they essentially were for most of their careers. So. Have the coaches spoken to you guys this week about the bump? No. At all? No. Considering not, James got his couple of weeks? No, uh, not really, but um, I guess it's a bit of a contentious issue and uh, we just got to deal with it. And I guess the way to get around it is just not bump anymore and um, you won't get yourself in trouble. But isn't that that's that's sad to think that we can't mm. bump? That's what that's what all the kids have been brought up on. Yeah. That's that's the way the game's played. That's what makes but, our game different. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, the, the lad wasn't even watching, and the bump was probably just a little bit late. I was at that game, and when I seen it, I thought, "Oh, you were just a it, split it, second too it late." Was not forceful contact. It was a 
clean bump other than a little bit of contact with Facebook. Forceful contact and we put him into next week. Brendan Goddard no, himself said there was no forceful contact. He didn't even remember being hit in there. He was going to say they're trying to get the guy off. But he got up and played on. <laughs> played on. Yeah, no, I, re I reckon it was right. I reckon the decision Two was weeks. right. Two weeks. Three. We'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gilly, let's go to that game now, shall we? Collingwood taking on Geelong. <laughs> Saturday night at the home of footy. And the Pies, Gilly, they won both games last year against Geelong. So yeah, they reference. did, and I'll tell you what, they wanted to win this one because they need to. Luke Ball, the ex-Saint in there with Russell Witts Williams. Out the side, Thomas with an ankle. It's not good, they reckon. Sure, that suspension, that is not good for a leadership player. Clark Mooney, he's out the side for the Cats. Good to see Corey in there along with Hunt. Kelly's out. <laughs> Kelly's out with that silly suspension. He shouldn't even got suspended, but Hunt... He's out with his shoulder. OK. Well, Duck, the Pies, they've won 11 of, the, of 28 quarters so far this year. That's not really good form. You spoke about Cloak before. It seems like this year, if you stop Cloak, you beat Collingwood because the midfield, they're lacking a lot of drive and penetration, not like the past couple of years. Yeah, I think, I think the midfield is still going OK, but I, I really think that the key to stopping Collingwood, obviously Cloak's a huge factor, but I think uh, Shaw and O'Brien, their run that they give them, if you cut... Shaw's obviously not playing, he's out suspended, so that'll be a huge loss to them. But they're the three barometers, I think. They're, their run and Cloak, obviously, if he's taking contested marks, Collingwood are half a chance. Alan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hawkins doesn't seem quite to be 100% at the moment, and, he, and he's played in spurts on, on Friday night against Essendon, but is he really fit and how's he travelling? And I mean, Motlop's been fantastic as well. I mean, he's faster than the roadrunner at the moment. When he's got the footy, no one can catch him. If he had to kick two straight goals in that first quarter, he had goal of the year, sewn up. Yeah, um, he's been really good for us, Motty. Um, on Hawkey, uh, he's training every session. Um, he's probably not moving as freely as, uh, as he was last year, but, you know, he's playing a really important role for us. and. Um, I think we're seeing a greater spread of mid, uh, midfield goals this year, so we're sort of picking up the slack. Chris, Andrew Cracker, he's just came back into the side the last couple of weeks and he could be the X factor with Collingwood in terms of providing that excitement and flair in that team because Collingwood lack that at the moment. They need a bit of spark and we know Thomas is out of the team this week. Can he be one of those guys to stand up to get Collingwood up? Well, when he came back a couple of years ago, he's the one that gave them a spark and they certainly do need a spark in their forward line at the moment, especially around the group because they are losing the guys of, like Dale Thomas. Losing him is a massive loss, but uh, I think they just need to get into his hands because he's a good decision maker going forward inside the forward 50 and inside forward 50, he makes good decisions and kicks goals normally as well. Their, for, their forward line's been uh, unsettled at the moment. Yeah. I mean, you see Dydak's actually an emergency this week and mm. uh, they haven't had that really consistent forward line. It's at their the midfielders, not their forward players. OK. Well. All right, well, let's get a selection. <laughs> Duck, we'll go straight to you. Well, I don't think they need a spark. I think they need a bonfire to beat <laughs> Geelong. Oh. I think Geelong will win. Yeah. Chris. I, I tipped against Geelong last week and oh. I'm not going to do it for the rest of the, rest, the, rest of the year, yeah. the Cats. Yeah. <laughs> Your old club, Ronnie. You're one of the legends down yeah, there, you tell me. Yeah, I played down there. We were 08 one year. <laughs> but um, I reckon you'll, you'll get the boys, mate, and uh, you're flying at the moment. Oh, going all right. Cat is <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gilly, I love the way Geelong play football, and uh, they're the best side in the competition at the moment, so the cat's for me. <laughs> so, that leaves me to pick Collingwood because I have to. <laughs> See that? See that little fella, Louie? Louie! That's Louie there. That's why they're going to win, because Louie said Collingwood are going to win. <laughs> OK, Gilly, well, let's go to the next game, shall we? It's between <coughs> the Bombers and Brisbane, Saturday night at the Docklands. Oh, look at the in scratch. He's Paddy Wright is back in the side. Kevin and Merrick out the side. Nathan Lovett Murray along with <coughs> Alwyn Davey with a hammy. They're going to miss him. Gumbleton's been arrested, Ronnie. I don't know why. Hardington's out of the side. But for the Brisbane Lions, good to see Staker. He hasn't played for nearly a year and a half. Good luck, Brett Staker, and Green's out. OK. Alan, last week, uh, the Bombers, they kicked 19 behinds. So there was a couple of rush ones in there, but basically they had very inaccurate kicking. Was that because the way that you've made them play wide and the pressure that you applied on them, do you think, or just a bad night for them? Because you, when you've had the same opportunities, you kick, you kick the goals. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say um, it was too much of that. I think they missed a few easy shots, and uh, they probably should have been a lot further in front of um, through that second quarter, so uh, we we're lucky they missed those shots. But um, they played some really good footy uh, last week. So um, you know, th when they're up and going, they're one of the best teams in the comp. So uh, yeah, they were tough last week. I was going to ask Chrissy, Brisbane Lions last week. They were terrific last week, and they almost got over the line. But um, Del Zeal come and 
won the game for them. There's a bit of upside for them for the next couple of weeks, or what? Yeah, look, um, you know, there's, there's been a bit of upside all uh, during well, the pre-season. The, the, the first time during the season, uh, Gilbert, you're right, they showed something and uh, they fought back. Last year they actually won this game, but uh, they've got a little bit of upside, but they're going to lead a lot of upside to get it over the Bombers. Oh. Well, let's get some tips on this one. And Dark will go straight to you. Focus, Dark. Brisbane or the, bom oh, or the Bombers? Gilly. Uh, the, uh, you, you're right, Brisbane were very good last week, but I think the uh, Bombers will be too good. Oh. Oh. Uh, bombers. Rock and Ronnie. Yeah, no. <laughs> bombers will win. Dal Dalziel, he, he got dropped, didn't he? They dropped him after he, he won the game for him he last week. Game, he got dropped. Alan, selection? Uh, exposed form, I'd have to say. Essendon. Yeah. Do you know that the Lions are only won one game from nine at Dockland? So, in saying that, easily, the Bombers. Yeah. Oh, well, brother, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick my neck out. Long neck. <laughs> <laughs> stick it out, brother. <laughs> nah, look, Brisbane Lions, I'm going for it. Yeah. That's, that's what I like about you, brother. You're very loyal. Uh, yeah, Ronnie? Ronnie's got no loyalty, yeah. has he? OK, Ronnie, what do you got for us this week, purple-wise? Well, we all love to sing our songs, don't we, Duck, Chrissy? Oh. And you guys probably get sick of singing the Geelong song, but uh, go. Gold Coast here, we've got some footage here, and, uh, mate, you've got to know the words of the song, don't you, Gilly? We're just looking here, some of the footage here. There's... And then we'll pick up young Greg Broughton, I think. Doesn't even know with the words, Alan. Like, oh, come on. Right. You've got, to know, you've got to know the song. He's only just come over from the Dockers. Give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Learn the words, mate. You've got to learn the words, mate. Well, he probably do... thought they weren't going to sing it very much. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, the words, mate. On that note, song. Gilly, we might just leave it there. Alan, thanks for joining us tonight. Good luck for the rest of the season <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> Alan Christensen, <laughs> long star. Well, brother, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with more of Margaret flashbacks. Eventual Premiers Carlton, that was way back in round 8, 1995, and a very significant game because that was Barassi's 500th game as coach, and he uh, it was absolutely are superb. You... But Michael yeah, Locker, we're in the number oh, 38 at... Guernsey. Don't, don't say, no, don't no, say no, you look like Gilly. you. No, I'm not going to say me, but I'm going to tell you a story. He, he should have went to St Kilda because the late, great Johnny King yep. had him all ready to come to Saints. We thought we were going to get him. What a handy acquisition he would have been. Anyway, that's not... He looked never 13, happened. though, Duck. didn't he? He looked young. He looked like a young gilly. <laughs> he did. Well, he probably probably learnt from watching me, Ronnie. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, Duck, that, that was a, a good win for Sydney because they knocked off Carlton. Carlton only lost two games for that whole year, but on that day, the Sydney Swans won. And uh, that was probably the nucleus of Sydney going forward from there because mm. they had players like Paul Ruse. Um, they also had Lockett, Paul Kelly. You know, they became the champions of the club and we see Sydney very strong in today's competition as a result of those pioneering players there at that time. Yeah, well, as you said, they, uh, yeah, Carlton lost two games that year. That was the start of uh, things to come for Sydney. They played in the grand final the year after, so um, that stood them in good stead. And to beat Carlton in that year, Carlton were just an unbelievable side in 95. And Chris, I know you were a mad, mad Carlton supporter, so you probably remember that game, but two unsung heroes that day for Carlton was Mill Hanna and Ange Christou, two... Carlton favourites, people love them, but they were very good players in their, in their day. Yeah, certainly. Both had raking, uh, raking kicks on them as well, coming off the half-back flank, and uh, every time uh, Ange used to kick the ball, he used to be a big woof go around the ground, and uh, he played a local game against me uh, a couple of years ago, and the whole crowd was still doing it, so he still got a bit of a... Uh, and he kicked the ball about 70 metres from full-back that day, so... When he got the football, they going, boo! <laughs> <laughs> OK, Gilly, well, I think we should go to our next game at Sydney, taking on three Mantle. A huge game this one, Saturday night at the SCG. Now the Dockers have won their last two games out of three at the SCG, so they've got no bogeys about it, Gilly. All right, good to see Morton, the grand finals last year. Mumford, good to see him back along with Welsh. Out of side, Jesse White's been omitted along with Armstrong and Lamb. For the Fremantle Dockers, oh, good to see Fife back. I just love watching this bloke play. Zach Clark, he'll have to uh, do the ruck work now that Griffin's out with a knee. And Mozungu, he just signed a contract 
But they've just dropped him. Mm. That's on you, isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> Gilly, um, well, that's what happened. I'm just... Yeah. Ronnie, last week, uh, Josh Kenny was absolutely fantastic. He was best on the ground by a mile. McGlynn was fantastic as well. He's come into a bit of form. But Mumford comes back into the side this week. Gilly just mm. spoke about Sandy Lands and Griffin going out. Now, I imagine that with Mumford dominating like he did last year uh, against Fremantle, he should probably give that midfield first use of the footy and that'll suit Sydney. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle in that in that midfield brigade there. And you spoke about Josh Kennedy. I mean, he's he's an absolutely elite midfielder. And uh, watching him last week, just gets the football. He's a magnet, and uh, geez, and he delivers it very well. CJ is a he's a good mover. Love watching him play. He's a he's a big X factor for Sydney Swans. The other thing too, running about their midfield, they don't have two bad games in a row either. Mm. Uh, you know, losing last week, they'll look look to come out uh, firing this week. Their midfield. Duck, Ballantyne and Walters, we know how well they've been playing there. Two players that obviously have to be tagged very heavily. Maybe a Bird, maybe a Nick Smith are probably likely to pick up them two guys, but they need to nullify them very early. Yeah, well, as we discussed before, this, once again, two small forwards in the, that do the damage for their particular sides, and both of those are barometers uh, for Frio. All right, well, um, I think what we should do, Gilly, is get, get some tips. Duck. Uh, look, Sydney Swans at home, I think, will win. Chris, as I said before, the Sydney Swans don't put in two bad ones in a row, and I reckon they'll want to come back this week. Okay. Ronnie. I reckon Fremantle will tighten them up, and I reckon they might win this one. I would like to say Sydney, but Fremantle have been sensational, even without Pavlich in that side, and they've just seen the manufactured goals. I think they're going to beat Sydney. Yeah, yeah no, look... I, um, look, I was originally going to pick Fremantle, but I'm actually going to go for Sydney because I've heard that during the week, when they had their review of the game of last week, a lot of the players actually admitted that they were soft. Now, when you do that... Where'd you hear that? Well, I'll tell you off here, off the show, Ronnie. <laughs> but when players do that sort of stuff, they take ownership of what's going to happen. I reckon that's going to be enough to put them over the line against the Dockers this week. OK, so Gilly's yeah. going for Sydney. Zach, what's... What do you got for Wayne's word this week? Well, Grant, when you said before that uh, James Kelly deserved two weeks, well, more or less three weeks because he's got 80, 80 points carryover. Uh, carryover. Um, when you look at uh, this example that I'm going to show you now, and this is why the match review panel has to have a good hard look at itself, and that's because the Lindsay Thomas bump earlier in the year where he ran past the ball, as you can see there, and we'll show it again if we can, but Lindsay Thomas takes his eye off the ball, the ball goes past him, it's going out of bounds, Bang, collects Reed and collects Reed high. Now, it was an accidental head clash, but that yeah. doesn't matter. The match review panel has always said if you run past the ball, take your eyes off it and, and make, whether it be accidental or not, if you hurt the other player. Now, Reed went off injured. Lindsay Thomas didn't even get it. They made a rod for their own back. And now, all of a sudden, this year, we see James Kelly. So we have a look at it again. We see James Kelly get rubbed out for more or less three weeks. And then we see Colin Sylvia, who I think in what he did, and wasn't great leadership by him. He's been one guy that's been in pretty good form. But his, uh, his incident on the weekend, which I found dirty, where he actually threw the elbow out, he actually ends up getting uh, three weeks. So the Kelly and the uh, Sylvia incidents are more or less, more or less similar, uh, similar, similar uh, punishments Chuck. for what I think are completely different um, things. So going back, you were saying that Lindsay Thomas should have been suspended. Well, on, on the back of what we've back, seen yes. the last couple of weeks, yeah, and just saying that, I think the Players Association have to take a stand and go to the AFL as a group and say, we're sick of this, let's, let's, let's draw a line in the sand if and you let's as a coach, make it clear you as a what coach, you can and can't do. What do you, if you as a coach, what are you going to tell your players? If you see the bloke coming... Don't you go for him, you just stand your ground or just keep running. Well, you just what are you going to tell your I coach? I think what you've got to do, you've got to get lower. You've got to get lower, because yeah. if you get anywhere around so, the head... So still that's go what, for the what, bump, but still lower. Still go for the bump, but you've just got to get lower. Right, we just might leave it there, Duck, but you made a very valid point there, and I need consistency at the tribunal. Well done. <laughs> Let's go to the next game. The Gold Coast taking on the Bulldogs Saturday. And I'll tell you what, if the Gold Coast win this one, Gilly, it's the first time they've won two in a row. Yeah, well, they might have a good chance. They could make the eight. Well, they would lose. Oh, I'll let know about the eight. We'll see what happens. But Russell's in. Out the side, Murphy's uh, out with a concussion. But for the Bulldogs, good to see Brett Goods back in there with Stephen and Stringer and McRae. Addison, Austin and Tut and Wallace. Wallace has admitted that's unbelievable. Chris. The Gold Coast, they've won five from their last 11 games, a couple from last year going into this year. Tom Lynch has come along really well. Sam Day, Zach Smith. They're all going to be good players for 
the goal case. For the Suns, <laughs> yes, <laughs> mate. Yeah, they are, they are. Case. And uh, last week, they, they played OK football. They didn't play outstanding football. They played OK against a team that's really struggling. And, and uh, he was fantastic, the Ruckman. And, uh, you know, one, one of the other guys, that, uh, Stevie May, he went down early, but uh, he's going to be a sensational. I've been praising him up on the show, uh, you know, for the last couple of years. He's going to be a great centre-half forward and one of the best centre-half forwards going around the comp. OK, that selection on this one. Doggies or the Gold Coast? Uh, doggies were very good for three quarters in about ten minutes last week. Gold Coast were terrific. I'm tipping the Gold Coast. Oh. Frank, can't believe, can't believe there's four omissions uh, out of the Doggies mm. when they were in it with ten minutes ago, as Duck said. Uh, I've got to go with the Suns. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with your boys. I think the Doggies will get over the Gold Coast. Yeah. The Doggies just have to win this one. They would have pencilled it in as a win at the start of the year. They've got to win this one to give the supporters yeah. something. No. Yeah, no they, no, they have to. But after what I gave Gold Coast Suns a bit of a rap earlier in the show, you know what, I've got to stick with them because they're going to opportunity to win two in a row for the first time. So, look, I'm going to go for the Gold Coast Suns. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go to our next game, Gilbert. And it's St Kilda taking on the Crows Sunday at Football Park. Let's have a look at Adelaide. Yeah, good to see Jenks in there with Callahan and Anderson's in there. They're obviously going to make the change uh, Friday or Saturday. But for the Saints, good to see Blakey back in there and Master and Jones. They missed him last week, but they won without him. Donnell Wright, oh, he's out with that jaw. That was pretty nasty. OK, Roddy, last week, Tommy Lynch, sensational kick, 10 goals. Very good, very impressive. Yeah, good, uh, a good fine, Lynch. He had a, had a day out there, 10. And, uh, Who'd he kick the 10 on? Oh, someone. I don't know who it was, but he, <laughs> I think he got dropped anyway. But I look at their, their forward line starting to shape up really, really well, Duck. And uh, with Lynch, Dangerfield, and uh, Sando's going to be pretty happy with young Lynch. He's going all right. Duck, let's get a tip for you, from you. Against his old club, Lynch yeah. actually kicked 10, but he won't kick 10 this week. I'm actually tipping uh, St Kilda. I think they'll yeah. I think they're all right. So I, I thought uh, St Kilda played well the other night, but I think they got the DR tickets to get over the Crows. Mm. OK. Ronnie. He, he might kick 10 again. How do you know? He might kick 11. But I, it's just an opinion. Oh, well, it's OK. You're going to be opinion. But I reckon the Crows <laughs> will get up and Lynch will week. kick 10. Yeah. Lynch, a great effort, Gilby. Obviously, he can't kick 10 every week. If he kicked no, four every week, Adelaide will be very happy with that. But Adelaide Crows will win this one. No, nah, look at it. No. Nah. Oh, look, it'll be a great uh, game of footy, but I'll tell you what, on Monday night when I've seen Saints playing, I'm not saying it, oh, it's no, because I'm a Saints man, you know that, yeah. but I'm going to say that's the best I've ever seen them play under coach Scott Waters. That's why they're going to beat the Adelaide Crows, because yeah. they've got a good record over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Billy, let's take a look now at the Marble Player of the Week oh. for Round 7. And this is how the votes come out. Look at that. Michael Walters, 10, but Stephen Motlock. Yeah. Stevie Motlock, mine, and Matty Stokes. And your relation, Ali Bernal. He's not my relation, but I'll, t I'll claim him. That's all right. <laughs> but no, look, uh, with Walters, the first thing I'm going to say is he's in terrific form, and I don't want to put, uh, don't want to put pressure on you, young Mick, but you're playing terrific. The way he's going, he's going to be all Australian material, Ronnie. But, pressure on but, but, one thing I want to say, I want to, I want to say well done to Rossi Lyon for sticking with this bloke, especially being an Indigenous player that was at the crossroads of his career, other coaches might not have been able to communicate and get to his head. Ross Lyon did. Well done to Ross and well done to Michael. Yeah. Well, what's the yeah. stats, Gilbert? Nine disposals, contested possessions, 11, five tackles and four goals, so he's absolutely flying at the moment. Yeah, he's going to be better than his dad, Michael. OK. <laughs> he's going to be better than his dad, and his dad better? was a star. Yeah. OK, or well, Gilly... Butter or better, butter? <laughs> OK, let's take a short <laughs> break, folks. We'll be back soon with Shelley Ware and around the grounds. This is Barbrook. <laughs> It's time to go around the grounds now. Give her a big warm welcome. Shall we? Yay! I know I said the Blues were on a seven-week roll last week and we've had a teeny weeny setback, so come on, you two. Give me your best shot. Well, what have you got? Oh, there's that. <laughs> well, you came in tonight, you had your lip dropped and I can see that, you know, <laughs> that you've lost. So I'm not going to say too much oh, because... Oh, love you. No, I've got to let you have your day in the sun now and again. Kylie Farmer, oh, who's in our audience, one of our titters. <laughs> she had something to remind nah, you. When I came in, I didn't say nothing, did I? 
No, you're very good. No, and then Kylie Farmer had to say it, and then I thought, I better go and see Shell, and I said, sorry, bub, but. You know, oh, no. Being a gentleman. Very sad. Oh. Gentleman. Well, there's a couple more big milestones this week. One of my favourite Blues, Heath Scotland, plays his 250th game. Of course he played a game or two at that other place. And tomorrow night, West Coast captain Darren Glass also reaches his 250th. Before the game, the Eagles and Kangaroos are supporting the Wirrapunda Foundation's annual fundraiser, taking things outside the ground to make sure you look out for them. Some of the competition's biggest names have undertaken a player-driven campaign to tackle the issues of homophobia in sport ahead of Idaho, the International Day Against Homophobia. The campaign includes a series of videos featuring players taking a pledge to stamp out the use of homophobic language. So Chris and Wayne, what do you think? Is this overdue? I think so. I think it's a great initiative by the AFL to, uh, to do a, an ad like that. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's around us. It's, uh, you know, I've got an uncle that was gay as well and uh, I know many gay people as yeah. well and they're, they're everywhere. So you've actually got to, you know, come out and uh, sort of be... Uh, I'm not coming out. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, relax. But, uh, but it's just... It's just uh, I think it's great that uh, AFL players put their names to many, many cause yeah. and this is one of the great causes as well. Sure. Now Melbourne and the Bulldogs have selected 50 players to play in the inaugural women's exhibition game. You listening, Ronnie? At the G during the women's <laughs> round on Saturday, June the 29th. The first women's draft was conducted last night with Daisy Pearce from the Darabin Falcons selected as the top pick. What? So Ronnie, this what is... Did get picked? <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, do you think this is the first time the women's team have played on the MCG? Oh no, when did you, when, when did you play on the MCG? <laughs> 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 I was, I was, I was going to say, Chris said he wasn't, but are you coming out or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, Shelley, terrific. It the, is girl, the, the ladies get out there and run around that big stadium, it's sensational. Yep. It's so that, was that the number one draft pick, was it? Yes. yes. Aaron yeah. Davies' yes. sister got drafted. So yes. Yeah. Aaron Davies, yes. Did they, have a, um, did they have a salary cap like the AFL boys? Yeah, it's about 4.5 million. No, I'm being serious because there's a lot of, you know, I've got a daughter, I've got a yeah, couple of daughters okay. and, you know, Ronnie's got a daughter, they might want to play That's AFL. That's well, things are going to have to yeah, change you right there, mate. So, a special <laughs> Indigenous round event presented by the City Lions is happening in Cairns this weekend, starting with a walk for reconciliation at 10am. The Dreamtime by the Sea football game will follow at 3 now my tips, as Layla mentioned, all about the tips are on our Mangrook website, but as I imagine most of you are waiting for bated breath for mine, I think Sydney will beat an improving Frio at home. Speaking of Sydney, I just wish GWS would win soon, but I don't think that they're going to beat the Hawks. That's what I know. Well that's around the ground for round eight. Last week, Layla went to the footy to ask Essendon fans if they think they can win the flag. <laughs> it's been a hard road for Essendon this year, but the question is, can the Bombers go all the way and win a flag? We asked the fans what they think. So, do you think that the Bombers will get into the grand final this year? Oh, most definitely. I hope so, but I don't know for sure. Got a long way to go. Yeah, they'll get in. They'll get in for sure. I do, actually. I seriously think we've got the best chances so far. In the form that we have right now, that we're looking pretty good for September. This will shut up all those doubters. Absolutely. Yeah. Did anyone ever tell you that you kind of look like Courtney Dempsey? Courtney Dempsey? <laughs> no, but I wish I could play football like him. <laughs> and if you did get into the grand final, who do you think you're going to play? Geelong? A Hawthorne, I hope. Because that way it'll beat me, me um, boss's team. Yeah. Maybe Collingwood. I hope it's against Carlton and we beat them by one point. Uh, either the Hawks or the Saints. There's a lot of better sides. Richmond... There actually isn't. There actually isn't more better sides. There right. isn't. Top of the ladder now means nothing. They didn't make finals last year, I'm sorry. Richmond? Yeah, he, sorry, needs guys. To go. he needs to go. Wow. Right. Counselling, I think, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you did get into the grand final, what would be the most amazing part for you personally? Um, well, we actually live down the street from Windy Hill, so it's a pretty big party when they win. <laughs> Joe Watson kicking the winning goal. Everyone saying that we are Essendon and the grand final, that would be awesome. <laughs> Joe, who's your favourite bomber and why? Um, yeah? <laughs> and which player do you think will surprise everybody this year? Um, 
Everyone talking about Jake Carlo. I think um, he's he's another Dustin Fletcher in the making. Uh, I reckon Winderlich with his return this year. I think Fletcher is is, uh, is a surprise uh, for anyone, you know, for his age, you know, and still playing on. I reckon Goddard, considering he's new to our club and already he's been a standout. Port Adelaide, they've got a chance what to get. Uh, one of your players. players. One of your players. Yeah, we're not talking about other teams. Uh, Are we talking? Teams. I don't know. We've <laughs> got to be fair in football, don't we? Let's take a look at the next game now. Richmond taking on Melbourne Sunday at the home of Footy of the MCG. For the Richmond Tigers, good to see Edwards uh, get a game because he's been kicking a lot of goals in the VFL. White's in there. Cochin, the skipper's back. Vickery, Arnott and D uh, Day. They've got some guns coming back. Tucky, did you see him running with that shoulder last week? He looked like an emu. He had the side nice <laughs> with a knee. Merrick with an ankle. Also for the Melbourne Dees, Jemma. <laughs> good to see him back there. He's normally a regular on our okay. show. Magna Trengo, Jetta Davis and Tumpas. Yeah. Burns is out with that... a wrist. Sylvia's suspension. And Vine is out with a toe. OK, that just quickly. Fast running out of time. Revolt, great last week. Five goals but you wouldn't think that Melbourne's going to upset Richmond this week. No, and there's a couple of big outs there for Melbourne. Burns, Silver and Viney, who have all been uh, pretty good for uh, Melbourne. I think the uh, Tigers will win and win easily. OK, Chris. Tigers. Tigers for me. And uh, Tigers for me, Gilly. Tigers. OK, well, let's go to our last game. It's a huge class down in Tasmania. The Hawks taking on GWS. And, well... Footy down there. Yeah, just the one change. Out the side, uh, Gibson, but into the side comes Spanger. They'll enjoy that game He's over. Player, he is. And for the GWS, Miles, Bug, Goals and Wiley. Out the side, Reed, Trelaw, Townsend and Williams. And uh, it'll be cold for the GWS, boys. Yeah, it will be. But Chris Ruffhead's been in great form and he's been one of those players that started off as a forward and going to the ruck. He's pretty versatile. And then you've got Bailey as well, who's... Kicked four goals a couple of weeks ago, but if he can, those two can dominate in the ruck. I think that uh, you know they're going to flog GWS probably about ten goals. They get on top early. I, I think he's their most valuable player. Um, I think when Ruffy's up and going, uh, Hawthorne normally play pretty good football. Uh, you know they, they talk, they've got some great superstars in the in the team in Hodge and and uh, you know Sewell and and Mitchell and all these sorts of guys. But I reckon he's their barometer. He's the guy that can actually lift them uh, whenever they're down. And look, it's going to be very easy for him this week, but uh, he's certainly a, an outstanding player for him. Mm. OK, well, Duck, your selection on this game. At, I mean... Do I need to? Yeah, well, <laughs> but the GWS have been good at, in parts and they're improving. No, I mean, it's going been, to take time, aren't they? Well, yeah, they are. And they're, they're still an up-and-coming side. They've, they've got a okay. lot to learn. And against Hawthorne, no. OK, Chris, GWS for you? No. <laughs> Hawks? Yes. Ronnie, oh, you Hawks. love the underdogs, we no, know that. Well, Hawks will send 15 players over... <laughs> they could turn up at half time probably, but I'm going for no, the little league well, team. Now nah, look, now nah, look, TWS will give them a good go for the first <laughs> half, but after then <laughs> they were very good against Essendon a couple of weeks ago. They took it up they'll half. give it to them for the first half, but they can't maintain four quarters. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Gilly, that's about it for another show tonight. We've got a huge show next week. Indigenous round, we've got the star, Nick Wimar, coming in. Buddy Franklin joins us, finally. And uh, we'll, get, we'll see you next week. We're going out with a performance tonight from some oh. National Indigenous Music stars celebrating Yothi Indy. And here's William Barton and Rowan May Mamaru and Kutcher Edwards. Good night. We'll see you next week. <laughs>
of home Floating down the river And voices I hear Of your long heroes Sea grass cry. 